Hello, uh, my name is Ahmed Karufa. I'm a lecturer in human-computer interaction. My provocation relates to the challenges some researchers may face due to their nationality. I will use three personal examples uh, to highlight some of these challenges since I have a very unpopular passport when my country is on the special list of countries that require extra security checks for almost all, if not all, countries in the world. So my first example is in 2008. I got my first paper as a PhD student accepted at the most prestigious conference when it comes to user interface design. I was very excited to present my work back then and even though I applied for a visa for more than three months before the conference, I still didn't get the visa in time to present my work and had to be presented my, by my supervisor uh, back then. So it was, very, it was very disappointing as I missed the chance to talk about my work and get to know uh, the community. The second example is in 2013 and where I was a researcher back then. So I got a paper accepted at CHI, which is the most uh, the biggest and most important conference when it comes to human computer interaction. My paper got an honorable mention award. Again, I was excited to talk about this work. Uh, it was this, this year it was in France, so uh, it's easier, but it still requires at least two working weeks to get a visa for people with my uh, nationality. However, uh, during that period, I was renewing my residency in my uh, country of residence and this again takes few weeks to a few months and I didn't manage to get my documents back in time to uh, apply for a visa so I missed uh, the opportunity to go to that conference yet again and uh, the paper had to be presented by one of the co-authors. This year I have another paper accepted at CHI, that same conference, which is uh, going to be held in the US in May and even though I do have a passport to the U.S., uh, sorry, I do have a visa to the U.S. this time, uh, which I obtained for a conference that I attended in October 2016, in which case I applied like almost four months before the conference, uh, because my country was initially on the banned countries list uh, for the U.S., I decided, and as a matter of principle, and to avoid the interrogation that I would most likely go through at the borders, I've decided not to attend and present my paper, and probably I will present it uh, online instead. For that same reason, I cancelled a workshop I was going to run on another conference in June in the US on collaborative uh, learning. So while I have attended a good number of international conferences, always had to plan well in advance to be able or to ensure that I have a visa in time. And this always involved uh, in traveling, doing interviews, and preparing loads and loads of uh, documents, a process which I really, really hate and try to avoid. <clears throat> and in fact, I have avoided uh, going to a number of conferences just to avoid having to go through this process. So for many others, things are even more challenging uh, because I have the advantage of uh, being a resident of a European country, which uh, makes the visa process a bit easier. But, <coughs> but others, this, uh, the things are more difficult, and they don't even manage to get a visa to any international conference, which greatly affects their uh, research and their uh, ability to build their so uh, social or academic social capital. So why do I think traveling and attending conferences is really important? Well, it is because it's where you meet many interesting people. I mean, I met a Christian when I was in the U.S. in October. And it's where you start uh, many interesting collaborations. So not being able to attend these events does significantly affect one's uh, research and one's career. So I hope this makes like an interesting uh, topic for discussion for you uh, today. Thank you very much for listening and have a good day. Bye.